Hello, what's up everybody? Welcome to a new video of mine and today we are going to be talking about how to prevent your deaths from gangs in League of Legends. And we are going to be using the example of Yasuo against Maokai here because Yasuo against Maokai, a lot of people think like, oh in this matchup you're never going to survive, you're going to die because Maokai currently in the current patch is a really strong champion in laning phase. And Yasuo is nearly one of those champions which needs a lot of scaling in early game before he gets his items. That's when he becomes really strong, but since Maokai is like such a heavy champion to deal with, a lot of people think like, oh okay, it's probably over, but I will be explaining how you can win even if your matchup really sucks. So starting off, if you get this matchup, for example Yasuo against Maokai, what you want to be doing first when you enter the laning phase, is you want to check where the jungler starts. Now, if the bot lane shows up at the start of the game, like before anyone else, that probably means that the jungler is either starting here, around the camp here, and then mid laner will help him out, or he's probably starting off here, and the top lane will enter the lane a lot, a lot later. So, you have to check that first where the jungler starts, because that's really going to help you out where, uh, what you have to do in the laning phase. Now, second thing you want to think about when you play this matchup is Maokai is like one of those champions that if he gets a freeze going on this side of the map, he's basically doing a really good job because all Maokai needs to do is like set up his lane in a way that if the genre comes to gank, then he's definitely going to get a kill out of this. So what we want to be doing in the Maokai matchup is, especially against Yasuo since you don't really have any disengage, that goes for almost every champion, you want to be freezing around this side of the map and as long as you don't cross this line, you should be safe. And also, you will, if you play really safe, you will almost always have your flash up. So, that's really good. Now, what if you cannot hold a freeze here at this side of the map and it gets across the line? What you want to be doing is you want to push this out all the way till the end of the lane all the way here under the tower and then you want to reset the wave and while you were doing that while you're, while you're going to reset the wave there are like other things you can do as well if you got like some spare time which you don't know what to do you can for example uh, walk over to the rift here take the camp here so you can get some more vision you can also walk up to the plant and use it so that the genre cannot use the the plant to gank the top lane once it's being reset because once it's being reset the lane will be back to where in middle where it started and that's still a pretty good spot for maokai because the jungler can all the way walk from here all the way here depending on the jungle if he can jump or not or he's just gonna walk like right this he will just uh, come right behind you and still gank you so you want to try to avoid that as much as possible now for warding there's a few things which I recommend you now for the early game what you want to be doing if you're going to take a freeze you want to be putting a ward here nearly most of the time so that if the genre comes and they really want to dive you that you are prepared to walk at the back or go for a 1v2 play under the tower right here. Now second thing you want to be considering after you get level 6 is if you got some spare time and you're like resetting the wave you're pushing it out into the tower then what you want to be doing uh, sorry, the map just disappeared, but I'm back now. So what you want to be doing after you push it out into the tower is you want to have you want to have a ward every time you go back to base. I'm assuming that you're always buying a ward if you got the gold for it. So what you want to be doing is you want to be placing a ward right here. This does this allows the mid lane to not get ganked by any jungle ganks anymore because most of the junglers always take the route of going this way and then like getting here and like ganking the mid lane. So putting out putting out a ward right here is really good. Now if you're walleted anyways like putting like a pink ward here you also want to make sure that you're going to place a trinket ward right here. If you ward these two places in the enemy jungle then you can prevent a lot of ganks from your lane as well as the mid lane. So you're basically catching two lanes at once by warding the spot. Because if you ward these two spots, you always know that the jungler is somewhere around this side of the map. So if he doesn't show up here, then you exactly know where he is. Now, another thing I want to be uh, explaining to you guys 
this is this is something that many people don't really think about when they're doing the laning phase but let's say that you're Yasuo against Maoka and you're freezing around this side of the map okay you're like totally fine like you got flash up you got everything up what you want to be doing nearly most of the time is you just want to be freezing like you're, like you're already doing but you also want to take a look at the map every one second yes not two seconds you want to be watching nearly all the time because if your mid lane is like freezing around here or like i don't know they're positioning somewhere awkward or like the bot lane is positioning somewhere awkward and they don't really have that many wards for example um if enemy team has lee sin and he ganks mid lane he comes from this side or he ganks bot lane you know exactly where the jungler is and you can use that information as a top laner to do like an all-in or do like a little trade with him or do whatever you want in order to win a laning phase. Now, this rule, you need to use it for every single matchup. This really, you have to master this if you want to carry your games. Basically, you never want to go for an all-in. You never want to do something risky unless the jungler shows up somewhere on the map on any ward. Like, for example, if you know that the jungler is here, you want to go for an all-in right here. If you if your champion is made to win the 1v1, go for it. Take your chance, but don't force it. Just don't force it. You keep on doing whatever you're doing. But if your champion is made to go all-in, you go for it. So this is what like this is what making smurfing in lower elo is really simple for like high elo players because um a lot of people don't have the proper runes and st other stuff. So, for example, if you're playing like Yasuo against Lee Sin top lane, people play really weird stuff in low elo, like Lee Sin top lane. So, for most high elo players, like playing in silver, gold, platinum, they really just have to wait for the junk to show up somewhere, and then they can just do they can just do an all in and get a free kill off. So, that makes smurfing for high elo play is really simple and that's why they're achieving like so high win ratio also because their macro pay is just 10 times better and the low elo players really have no clue what the fuck they're doing but anyways now that we covered that as well so make sure always only go for all ins when you know where the genre is now what if you are freezing here and Mauka is all standing here. And you suddenly see Needly coming, standing right on top of your ward that you placed down right here. And they want to go for an all-in dive. Now, something that you have to think about before this happens is... If you start the game and you see a Mauka in top lane. And you see like an, uh, an Elise or like a Pantheon. A champion that can dive really easily and get you down. There is one really good fix for this. Now, let's go over to the Masteries guys. Um, okay. So, don't, just ignore the chat, it was, we were just like joking around. Um, what you want to be looking at is, you want to be looking at Siege Master. This must this mastery is really overpowered in terms of like, sitting on a tower and like, expecting people to dive you with two people. This basically allows you to gain 8 armor and 8 magic resist when near an alley tower. That's really huge, guys. You really have to make a choice whether you want to go for like the top skin, which you get two less damage from champions and monster basic attacks, or Siege Master. Now, if they got Elise or Pantheon or a champion that can dive you really easily with like one of the two C uh, scenarios on the tower, you want to go for Siege Master. This will help you really easily to survive those and probably even get one or two kills off depending on uh, how bad the situation looks or how good the situation looks. So. This is something that you always have to consider before you get into the game, guys. Really important. Always take it if they got, like, weird champions that can dive. Now that we got that out of the way. Um, something else I want to be talking about. Which a lot of people don't really think about. So, let's say that you push out the wave into Maokai. And it's, like, somewhere here right now on the tower. You have pretty much placed a ward right here, like mid lane is totally fine, you place the ward down here. You probably even got the camp right here already because like you're bored, you don't really know what to do and you probably took the plant. There's another thing which you can do to get a really big advantage from the top laner. Which um, basically, 
you're being Yasuo, enemy team is uh, like, I mean, the, your teammate is like an Orianna in mid lane playing up against an, uh, like a Victor, for example. So what you want to be doing is, let's assume that there's no ward here. Let's hope there is no ward at least, otherwise you can walk around here. Basically what you want to do is, you want to flank the mid laner from behind. You want to either like flank him right, going right here and then kill him with the Orianna ultimate with Yasuo. And kill him right away. Or if that's not a possibility, you can go and dive the mid laner straight onto the tower. Now, if you can make this work, you can probably even get the mid tower off. But there is one thing that you really need to look at before you do this. If you go for something risky like this, where you dive the mid laner, you need to know exactly where the jungler is. Now, if the bot laner, like if the jungler shows up around bot lane and the bot lane is here as well, then you can just go for the dive. Like pro, uh, top lane is, top lane is being forced to farm under the tower because you pushed him in. There's nothing you could do. He's forced to take the wave. Otherwise, he's going to miss a lot of gold and CS, and like XP. And if the jungler and bot laner shows up right here, that means that the mid lane is probably alone. So you can probably go for a dive right here, get like a nice kill off, and you can also maybe if you're lucky enough, like if he's dead for long enough. You can probably even take the tower and that's like really huge for the mid laner. Whether you get the kill or not, that's really huge for the mid laner because that the tower the tower is dead. He can just basically push it in himself and then look for like, hmm, maybe I can gank top lane, maybe I can gank bot lane. These things are really huge, which you have to think about if you're playing top lane. And uh, let me think if that's everything. Well, after laning phase, like after the tower is done, those things I will be talking about later because that goes into like the mid and the late game. Um, I think I covered everything that you should probably know by now to like prevent your deaths and like pretty much how to play the laning phase because I've been explaining like a lot of things right now. I hope that those things will like stay in your head and really help you out. It's, this will, all those things that I have been talking about will probably definitely help you out, especially if you're like silver, gold, platinum, maybe even diamond five to three, because a lot of people are playing like autopilot. A lot of people will play the game and they won't be thinking about this. They will just think about, ah, oh, well, CSing, I'll just take the CS right here and uh, I'll just look at the map once in a while, like placing a ward right down here. There is a lot more stuff that you need to be doing. You cannot play autopilot. If you think about all the things that I just covered in this video, I can almost guarantee you that you're going to be an amazing top laner. You're going to be amazing because if you do, as I say, I know that there's like bad matchups out there and like good matchups, but um, definitely in bad matchups, if you think about all of these things, you're definitely be going to become a lot better player and you will definitely be climbing a lot. Now, we didn't cover anything else outside of the laning phase, but we will be covering that within the next video, all right? So, guys, thanks a lot for watching the stream. I will be live again at 7.30 p.m. Uh, tonight on stream. Streaming every single day. Uh, Yasuo Camille, Riven Watchake. If you want to watch me, make sure you come tonight. Um, so, thanks all for watching. And uh, I'll see you either tomorrow or within uh, the next couple of days. See ya.